Hello and welcome back to the Lynn Lowdown. I'm Danny Vittori and today we have on the Executive Director for Save the Harbor, Save the, the Bay. Thanks for coming on today. Thanks, Danny. Happy to be here. And so we're so glad to welcome you back. And you are coming back specifically to talk about the Kings Beach issue. Yes. So would you mind running us through a little bit of that? Just so. run through it. Just like, just, just take care of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I know there's been a lot of talk about Kings Beach in the last couple of years. We're really excited about that. It is routinely the least clean beach in the Commonwealth, which is A, why I moved up here, B, why we talk about it so much, and C, why there are so many people, I think, working really hard to address that issue. So I was so glad to be invited on today to just kind of like give a general update, uh, clarify a couple of things, including some advice for people who are out there using the water. Um, but first off, um, we have a dirty beach at King's Beach. Why do we have a dirty beach? It's because of uh, Stacy's Brook. Stacy's Brook is, if you're standing on, on the boardwalk or down on the beach and it's low tide, you see basically a creek running from the seawall out into the water. That is Stacy's Brook. Hundreds of years ago, it was a nice little brook that ran through Linen Swamp, Scott, and you know, probably before there was all there was a city and a town here. You know, yeah. it's it very picturesque. It comes from Floating Bridge Pond. But about a hundred years ago, maybe a little more, um, we had a city coming up, and they turned that in. They, they culverted it. They built pipes around the brook to make it the sewer and stormwater system. This makes a lot of sense in a developing city because that's got to go somewhere. You don't right. want it to go in your basement. Um, and there wasn't that many people. It wasn't really a big deal 120 years ago. Yeah. Now it becomes a big deal. We have so many people living here. Those pipes you know, keep getting older and older. And one really great thing was about 30 years ago, um, we separated, the, the Linden Water and Sewer Commission separated the stormwater from the sewer pipes. So Stacy's Brook technically only carries stormwater, so the, the water coming from the brook itself and anything that rains. But when you get into the nuance, it's not just stormwater because, again, we have those really old pipes. That uh, the sewer pipe could be cracked. You have tree roots grow through things. This is not a unique problem for Lynn or for yeah. Swampscott. This is something that happens with every sewer system. They're underground. These ones were made of clay. Um, so there's a, something called a consent decree from the EPA to both Lynn and Swampscott. You have to fix your pipes. Okay. And the good news is they are doing that. Yeah. It's a plan, there's a plan in place, there's multiple phases, you take a television camera up it, um, not like these, but you know, much smaller. <laughs> you look at it, you go, oh, there's a crack, we better patch that crack. Oh, look, there's a tree root, we gotta figure that out. Oh, look, there's a, a pipe that shouldn't be coming in there, let's move it to the right pipe. So, but that takes a long, long time because one day you send that camera up there and uh, there's a lot of flow and you don't see the bottom half of the pipe. And you go, oh, that pipe looks pretty good. You go back a week later maybe and the pipe is dry, you go, oh gosh, there's a huge crack in the bottom of that pipe. We didn't see that before. You ask Boston Water and Sewer, you ask anybody doing this type of work, this stuff takes a long time. So it's multiple phases. People can, uh, residents could, could, you know, take the initiative and they could have their home system inspected. It's called the lateral. It runs from your house. You know, you flush the toilet, it goes down the house and then out to the main pipe in the street. So it's that part from the house to the street mm -hmm. that the city is not technically responsible for, although they will go around and, and help that out by like saying, hey, we'll test your lateral for you sometimes. Uh, I know I just got a letter in Swampscott because they're actually doing that next week. They're going to every house and they're trying to check out everyone's laterals. Um, but you can get it checked out and make sure that that's not contributing to the problem. Anyway, that's a lot of talking about the background of why we have a contaminated beach. And so the advice we have to everybody is when you go to the beach, don't go in the outfall. Don't go in the water that comes out of the seawall, whether that's Stacy's Brook at King's Beach, whether you're at any one of our, if you're at Fisherman's Beach in Swampscott, there's an actual pipe you'll see. Yeah. It's not from a brook, but it will have flow, and that is contaminated flow. They, they're the most fun part of the beach, too. It's like, course, it's yeah. flowing water, it's coming out like in a waterfall, but you don't go in it. It's not good for you. Um, yeah, so, so that's the background. <laughs> and you were mentioning too, even before we came on the air, you said this is not uncommon having pipes that crack, that break, but there are more unique issues to Kings Beach that are making it 
even a more complex issue to solve. Yeah, the unique issues are the age of the pipes, the right. material they're made out of. So, you know, Swampscott's lining the pipes with PVC. So that is like a kind of a quick way they like, uh, you put like a mold in, they blow in this liquid, it hardens and dries fast, and now you have an internal lining in this clay pipe, you've basically like reinforced the pipe just like that. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty effective way to do it. Um, so, if, you know, in theory, if we're able to get to every single pipe, repair them all, that in theory really should solve the problem. But it's, again, it's not as simple. All of this is underground. Think about like potholes in streets, right? You fix the street, you pave it, a couple years later, you're gonna have to fix it again, right? Because right. the potholes are gonna emerge. This is wear and tear on your, on your city infrastructure. So what we're looking at in Kings Beach, and there's a steering committee made up of Lynn and Swampscott and the city, uh, sorry, the state um, folks, the EPA. I sit on it as a, as a kind of a community representative from Save the Harbor, Save the Bay. We meet um, as needed, uh, try to do like four to six times a year. We try to put all the minutes up on kingsbeachma.com. It's a different website than, than our website, but kingsbeachma.com has, uh, hopefully, we try to keep that updated as much as possible. And so we're really looking at a complementary solution, a second thing we can do that's not required, but would actually get the beach open sooner. Right. Because it's a great beach. It is. Nahant's it's a fantastic. great beach. It's right over there. It's always full. Um, Kings Beach is gorgeous. And if it was clean, like just picture, you know, it's, it's so wide at low tide, like you could be doing, people would be using that all the time. Uh, it's Lynn's only beach, right? right. You can walk yeah. down to that from a lot of parts of the city in ways you can't quite get to Nahan as conveniently because it's so long on that causeway. But um, yeah, so the three things on the table right now that are being explored, none of this has been decided, and we all feel a sense of urgency. I know when I look on Facebook and I talk to my neighbors, it's like, why haven't we solved this yet? And I'm not trying to make excuses or anything, but it's like, it just, it takes a long time. The, the repairs to the pipes take a long time. And being intentional and you following the data and the science to make sure we're doing something that A, is gonna work, B, isn't gonna harm the, the ecosystem in a different way, um, and C, you know, won't break the bank. Um, so, do you wanna hear about the three yes, things we're looking on. at? Yes, go for it. <laughs> yes, what are our three options? Our three things that are being looked at uh, right now are um, ultraviolet disinfection. People might be familiar with this. It's, you know, you blast it with UV light, just like it comes from the sun, um, and you, uh, you, you disinfect the bacteria that way. Um, the, Challenges to UV are you have to uh, you know be able to get light all the way through the water column. So if it's really cloudy, turbid water, like it won't work as effectively. But if you and you have to build an actual facility, we have to build an ultraviolet facility somewhere near the mouth of the of the brook. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty limited on space here in in Swampscott mm -hmm. and Lynn. It's pretty densely populated. We've, there's only a couple spots that could work. Um, but uh, you know, we, we are looking at the steering committee, Mayor Nicholson um, is, is looking at a, a pilot of that to see if we could, um, if it will be effective even in those sort of more, how it could handle those like more turbid, cloudy yeah. water days. So that's going on. Um, there is the idea of extending the pipe. So the pipe ends at the beach, at the seawall right now, but if you were to extend the pipe out into middle of Lynn Harbor, what you do is you move that contamination away from people. It's already going into the harbor. It's diluting, you know, by the time it gets farther out and over, you know, time. But it's constant contamination. So the idea would be if you moved it away from people, yes, it's still going into the harbor. That's not great. But we are continuing to fix the pipes that would reduce that contamination. And that's what must be done. But again, you would get it off of the beach. Right. Um, advantages to that, it's a quote unquote permanent solution, right? It doesn't have any operating cost. You would build it and it would be there and slowly that water would keep getting cleaner. To get that done, you would need to look at where the eelgrass beds are. It's a really important uh, kind of habitat for a lot of eels and other um, <laughs> other um, vertebrates and things like that that live out there and make sure we, we do some examination of the oh great a wonderful photo of Stacy's Brook for those of you who don't know it that's it don't go in it um, and uh, the currents would this actually dilute 
quickly enough so that it wasn't contaminating the Han Beach in a different way or coming back to Kings Beach. Right. So again, we've got to do those studies before we put that in place. The last one, this is actually my personal preference at the moment, but we still have a lot of questions, is um, ozone disinfection. <laughs> you know, oz we know ozone will work just like chlorine would work, but we can't put chlorine into the ocean. It's, no. a, it's a chemical. Same with ozone. There's a concern about how it's applied and will it kill things that you don't want to kill. Um, we know this is being used in some lakes in Ohio and Florida pretty effectively. There's some really good data that shows it doesn't harm zooplankton, but we don't know if there's an effect on on macro invertebrates or vertebrates. So we're content, and DEP at the State Department of Environmental Protection has been really helpful in like, they don't have, this, some of this doesn't even fall into their purview, but they've been really helpful looking at our data, mm -hmm. looking at yeah. our questions and giving us advice. Um, and they're very cautious. They're like, I don't know, you might want to look at this data, you might want to look at that, and, and, and things like that. So I, we're continuing to have meetings with the EPA over in, Region five and just trying to follow it. But for folks who are out there going, why is this taking so long? Why can't we get this beach open? Those are the reasons. I mean, the thing that is, needs to be done and has to be done and everybody does do is being done. And it just takes a long time. It takes a long time to go through miles of pipe. Hundreds of miles. Yeah, so, many, so much pipe. And even if you pick a solution tomorrow, you still either have to build something or get the materials. So anything, any one of these solutions will work, but it does take a significant period of time. Exactly. And, they, and all three of those take different periods. You know, right. the bigger the project, the longer it'll take. But yeah. And I said, I do have to, I know wrap them in a moment. It feels like it went by so quickly. I talk too much. Oh. No, you did great. It's a great overview of it. But I just want to thank you again for coming on to talk about it and really giving people a look into, you know, what solutions are being potentially thought of. Yeah, absolutely. In the meantime, go check out the events that are going on on the dry part of the beach. We don't do a lot of swimming events at Kings Beach, but Diversity Matters Festival was a couple weeks ago. You got the concerts and movies in Red Rock Park. We were doing mandalas in the sand. There's some photos uh, um, out on, on the sand on Kings Beach. And the Girl Scout troop up in Lynn and Nahant, no, sorry, Lynn and Swanscott and Marblehead. It's a really long number. I can't remember. My daughter's in it. They did a whole project, and there they are. You know, clean water, save Kings Beach. Um, people are getting involved at all, all levels, so it's, it's really cool. Yes, they are. And they can check out your website, our website, or anywhere else to really stay updated on all the events that are happening here and in all the surrounding areas. And once again, I'm Danny Vittori. This has been The Lynn Lowdown, and we'll see you next week with more guests.